Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. Today we are performing another one of our famous DC fast charging tests from 0 to 100% on a 2020 Nissan Leaf SL Plus. That is the one with the big battery. This is going to be pretty interesting and it all pretty much comes down to the battery pack being ambient air cooled. There's no active thermal management anywhere for the Nissan Leafs battery pack. And what that means is it can get really hot and in order for the car to preserve its longevity, it limits its charging speed so that it doesn't fry the cells by charging it that fast. And it's called rapid gate. And so the first day I went to go perform this test, meanwhile, I had the Leaf for about two weeks. Uh, the first day I went to go do this test, the battery was just too warm, and I will play you that clip now. So you can see here we're doing 33 kilowatt. It expects two and a half hours for a full charge, and um, I think it's possible. I just looked up some charging graphs. It's possible that our battery is just too warm, and it's already thermal limiting, and we haven't even plugged anything in it's, it, You know, just now, and it's uh, 80 degrees out. It's not like it's that hot. So maybe what we need to do is do this test another time, potentially on another station uh, with a cooler battery pack. Again, capacity is really good on this car. Um, yeah, it's just pegged at 33 kilowatts. So you can see conditions weren't optimal for the car. We had to go back and reset. So I went back another day to the same Electrify America station and let me show you what happened then. Well, you join us on another day where the stations are completely replaced. And I actually charged on this unit the other day, worked first time, first go was amazing. But now it's cool outside. I ran the car almost all the way down. It's at 9%. And I came by here just to make sure the Chatamo would charge. And it's a good thing I stopped here first because of course there's only one Chatamo at EA stations and it's doing a Windows bootloader thing. Now I knew this ahead of time because on my way over here, I checked the Electrify America app and it said it was totally unavailable. Here they're removing the last of the stations that were installed because the new Signet units are in. If I had a CCS vehicle, it'd be no problem. There's three other stations that seem to be working fine, totally available. It's just the one that I need, of course, because it, this car is a Chatamo fast charger doesn't work. So I guess we'll have to come back another day and charge up the Leaf zero to 100%. For now though, it's late and I'm going to bed. So that station wasn't actually working that well, but then I got a notification on my phone and like seven calls from EA and they're like, hey, the charger works now because I tweeted it out that <laughs> it didn't work. So they got it working. We went back there and we were able to finally start our DC fast charging test on the Leaf. We are driving back over to the charger. Our goal is to arrive at 0%. We wanna do a zero to 100% charge here on the Leaf or maybe 95% because that last 5% will take forever. Couple things we wanna note on this car, of course, the battery temperature, nice and in the middle. It is not warm and that should give us maximum speeds for this charging test. The other thing, battery capacity, full. It's still a fresh car, only 4,300 miles on it. So we are all set for a pretty good charging test, assuming this charger works. And yes, we have made it. We are at 0%, zero, zero miles. Battery temperature is looking good. And look, the screen is working. Let me get the colors to show correctly. There we go. Ready to rock and roll. Power of Twitter right there. Now, before I play you that test, there's a few things that I wanted to go over everything and I will voice over the test as well, sharing my thoughts throughout the entire charging session as to why we're getting certain speeds and why we're seeing certain things. But the first and most important thing here that I've noticed is the Nissan Leaf SL Plus is a Chatmo based car. And that's what makes it so difficult to road trip because the CCS network is getting built out massively and the Chatmo network is sort of dying. Uh, no new cars will be sold with Chatamo. I think the last one is the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, but honestly, no one in the U.S. buys that anyway. And the Nissan Aria, their next generation product, which is shaping up to be pretty nice, is going to be CCS and have active thermal management. So Nissan has learned their lesson after the Leaf saga with overheating. Now, the Leaf should, in theory, take 100 kilowatt peak of DC fast charging from Chatamo. The problem is 
there's like no stations, maybe one or two on the entire East Coast that can actually output that much charging power. And my plan was to go to one of those stations just up the road in Virginia. However, the problem would be if I had driven there and charged to get there, the battery would be too warm to accept 100 kilowatts. So there was almost no way for me to do a 100 kilowatt DC fast charging session. So I, I said, okay, no problem. I let the car sit all day and most of the night in the driveway to ambient temperatures, brought it over to my Electrify America station on a ambient temperature battery pack as close as I could get to it and plugged it in and something amazing happened. And you'll see it here in this charging session. We actually blew past the Electrify America's rating of 50 kilowatt and it charged almost at 70 kilowatts. So you'll see that here. Now it's not the full 104 that the car can take, but it's still an, an impressive number, especially considering the charger is only rated for 50 kilowatt max. Now this is on Electrify America's brand new Signet units that they are installing seemingly in place of FSEC units. Uh, that's why I also had to wait during this test because our whole station got ripped out for station reliability and they put a whole new one in. So that's a huge story. Really nice to see that Electrify America is putting that much effort into station reliability. It was just kind of a pain while they were down. We weren't able to get anywhere, but minor problem, we're past it and we can now travel up and down I-95 with brand new fully functioning chargers. So let's go play the charging test and I will voice over and share my opinions and uh, some, some background as to why we're doing certain things here. And here we start our charging test on the Electrify America DC fast charger. You can see that we're being billed 15 cents per minute. This is before the switch to kilowatt hour in my state. So this is a little bit of an older charging test. You can see here though that we are ramping up 68 kilowatts, far surpassing the maximum of 50 kilowatt listed on the front of the screen uh, and anywhere else on this charger. Nothing indicates visually to the, to the customer that this charger can output more than 50 kilowatt on a Chatamo charger. And certainly this is not a complaint. This is great. And if anything, it's really cool for the Leaf. In the bottom left hand corner, you'll see the internal Leafs charging screen. Of course, the big blue screen is the Electrify America unit. You'll see state of charge, the amount of power that we're taking in. Now the Le Nissan Leaf is expecting one and a half hours all the way to full, but 75% should only take 31 minutes right now. And that's what that graph is showing. So we've rocketed up from zero to 20%. It's only been 13 minutes. It's really not bad charging at more than 50 kilowatt. That is pretty impressive. And you can see our rated range in the bottom clicking up there. Occasionally you'll see the screen cycle through on the leaf. That's just from me getting in and out of it. Um, sometimes I knock the GoPro here or there. But it's interesting to see both the Electrify America screen and the Leaf screen because this is how we can compare some of the data going back. First off, you'll notice the percentages don't necessarily align. Uh, it seems that the EA station catches every other uh, percent. So it goes 36, 38, 40. And you can see I'm constantly checking the battery temperature on the Leaf side and you can watch it creep up to go from relatively normal temperature right in the middle and you'll see as we increase in our charging session, it will go up. Now, I'm not sure if the LEAF is actually ramping down its charging speed to below 60 kilowatt right now to preserve battery temperature, or if it's to um, save the battery pack in terms of its normal DC fast charging curve. That would be an interesting one. You can see that battery pack temperature is really climbing up there now. So either way, I think this is about as good of conditions as you're gonna get in the summertime. Now in the freezing cold winter, this is not as big of a problem. You could probably get two or three DC fast charges throughout a day. So I'd love to perform this test again in the cold weather and see like an optimal DC fast charging curve for this car that might be a little bit better. You can see our charging cost is relatively inexpensive, $5.25 for 36 kilowatt hours of energy. That's really not bad. And that's just because we've been pulling really good speeds on this per minute rate. I still believe the fair way to charge for charging is by the kilowatt hour. So really nice that Electrify America has updated that to my site. This is actually a big story for EA. They've done a lot in the last few months and most of it is pretty positive. I'm pretty pleased. So you can see the car is now predicting five minutes to 75%. We're at 72% in 42 minutes or so. And that's probably where you would wanna to charge to on a road trip. 
somewhere in that 75 ish percent range because you can see now we're tapering around 40 kilowatt and that's just a little slow battery temperature is pegged almost into the red which is just insane to me that nissan still makes a vehicle without active thermal management keep in mind the car had not been driven anywhere this day it was about 75 degrees out it was in the dark so you didn't have any sunlight warming up components even though the battery's underneath the car and it still cannot take one dc fast charging test without overheating the battery that's crazy um, 84 percent we're at 35 kilowatts still not bad although you can see that taper up top is really going to get strong because the car thinks it's going to be 39 minutes to full and this is where your per minute rate starts to become less of a value when you're paying for time but you're taking in less and less energy that's when the charging session will progressively get more expensive for the amount of energy that you're taking in and we have reached 90 percent state of charge here in just a second in less than an hour so from totally dead again the car wouldn't move up to 90 percent took 58 minutes and that's not great but it's not horrible either i'd say that's totally fine for your road trip the question becomes what happens if you were to plug in at the next dc fast charger and say okay i have a hot battery how long would it take you then to get to 90%? And the answer could be an hour and a half, two hours, and sometimes more. Now we're really starting to taper 15 kilowatt at 94%. It's not horrible compared to other EVs though. I just tested a Taycan with a huge battery pack, 90 something kilowatt hour. That was doing 15% or sorry, 15 kilowatt around the same percentage. It's really not horrible. You can see our rated range or our, our gasometer range ticking up to 184 miles. And that's where we've ended the charging test. And there's your charging test. We finished up and again, not quite 100%, but very, very close. And I really appreciate you guys following along. Hopefully you learned a little bit about DC charging, charging speeds, and also the Nissan Leaf. I wanna leave you with one last thought. As soon as I pulled out of the DC fast charger, merged onto the highway, uh, the battery actually went into the red and limited power output. It actually overheated. And this is such a problem though, because the Leaf is a great, car it is a fantastic car to drive around it handles pretty nice it's got great tech and you'll see our reviews coming on this car that really highlight it's a great ev the problem is it's not a great ev to charge fast so it has really good range in our highway range test at 70 miles per hour it did 181 miles something like this around 180 190 miles um, and that's plenty for like most normal driving in one day it's just not going to be your road tripper because you can't fast charge this thing more than once a day. Pretty sad.